What's up guys, this is Steven from techmaker.tv. In this episode, we're gonna take a look at the strategy design pattern in JavaScript. If you like this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up. And if you're learning to code, definitely go ahead and subscribe to the channel. We're publishing content every day that's gonna help you on your journey. Also, be sure to check down in the description for some free stuff that we're giving away. With that said, let's go ahead and jump in. So over here on the right side of my screen, you can see that I have a really simple class written in JavaScript. Uh, this is an employee class. It takes in, in the constructor, employee details and payment options. You can see because we're calling methods on these that that's some kind of object. And then there's a single method, send payment, which calculates uh, basically a monthly salary based on the salary that's in the payment options. And uh, then down here, we're saying sending the payment amount to the person's name. So it's really not doing anything other than just console.logging. And then down here at the bottom, we're creating up a new employee and we're sending the payment. So we can go ahead and run this over here. So we can go node employee.js. And you can see that we submit and execute the calculation. So as with all of the videos that I'm doing in this design pattern series, I'm trying to let the examples be requirements driven. And actually, I just noticed something I want to change really quick. I don't want to call that payment options. I'm going to call that payment details. Maybe I think that's a little bit better uh, naming. Let's run this one more time just to make sure it still works. And of course it does. Okay, so what I want to do is say, imagine that we get a requirement, and this would be a pretty uh, obvious requirement that maybe our company is going to start hiring hourly employees. So let's start by doing this the ugly way, so to speak. So let's go ahead and copy Jennifer down here and let's make another person and let's call uh, the person Bob. And this is going to be Bob Jackson. And Bob Jackson has an uh, hourly rate of $35 and so what we would like to see is and additionally we're gonna have to say um, the number of hours and let's call this uh, for easy uh, math here at the beginning let's call this 30 so we could split that up a little bit more so we could see it better okay so now what we would like to see is this thing, send Bob, what is that? 30 times 35 hours, so they're like, I don't even know what that is off the top of my head, but it's sending not a number right now. So what we need to do is account for the fact that if there's an hourly rate, we need to handle this differently, right? So what we're gonna do here is say, okay, if, first of all, let me back this up here and just say, uh, first of all, I'm going to say variable payment amount, and then right here I can say um, if this dot uh, hourly rate, what we can do is something else, else, and right here we'll say payment amount equals that. So then up here, well, let's run this as is and see what happens. Let's see if we're still paying Jennifer. So we're getting the exact same thing we were before. So we haven't changed the behavior at all. So essentially what we've said is like, if there's an hourly rate, do some, do nothing. Otherwise, just do what you were doing before. So we're still getting the same exact result because hourly rate is nil. So then what we can do is say this dot hourly rate equals payment details dot hourly rate. This dot uh, what do we need here? Number of hours equals payment details dot number of hours. So then right here, what we need to do is set the payment amount. So the payment amount is, what would that be? So it would be this dot hourly rate times this dot number of hours. Does that make sense? Okay, so let's run this and see what we get now. So we're going to send a thousand dollars or one thousand fifty dollars to Bob, and we're going to send Jennifer eleven thousand two hundred fifty dollars. So remember, we're looking at this. Our our company is paying employees on a monthly basis here. So Bob is really low part time. He's only done thirty hours for the whole month. 
So what happens if we do 150? Well, you know, obviously it's just going to multiply 150 times 35. But there's a question here, which is, okay, wait a minute. There should be, well, let's say it's 180 because let's say there's four weeks and there's 40 hours a week, so that'd be 160. So 20 hours in here should probably be overtime. So he probably also has to have some overtime money. And I'm not going to build out that calculation. We don't need to go through that little exercise here. That's not the point of this video. But the point would be is now what you're going to end up having to do is say something like if this dot hourly rate is greater than 160, you know, and you're going to end up with another layer of logic here inside of this uh, send payment method. Then imagine that we have some other sort of uh, payment strategy. Maybe we start paying our contractors through this class, and they're and they're using, you know, some sort of fixed price billing or something. So what's going to end up happening is this send payment method is just going to become a giant mess. So in actual fact, I messed that up. That shouldn't say if if hourly rate is greater than 160, this would be number of hours. So just don't want to don't want to confuse anybody. So if the number of hours is greater than 160, you would need to be handling some sort of uh, overtime for those employees in this situation as we've described it. But we're not going to worry about that here. So what I want to introduce now is the strategy pattern. So essentially what we want to do is say, okay, each one of these little chunks, you know, should be able to be calculated somewhere else. So we want to delegate the responsibility of having to calculate how much money we're going to send to this person to someone else. So let's take a look at how we can do that. So since we had a salary to start with, I'm going to go ahead and put a class. I'm going to do this all in one file um, for now, just so you can kind of see it all in one place. Um, but and I'm going to go ahead and well, let's just start. So it's a class salaried uh, payment. Mm, should we call this sal? Let's call this salary strategy for now. That's fine for now. So right here, we're going to have a constructor, and our constructor is going to take in payment details, and then we're just going to say this dot payment details equals payment details. Okay. No, actually, I'm going to say this dot salary equals payment details dot salary. Okay, that's better. Then what I'm going to do is say uh, payment amount, and I'm just going to return this right here, copied and pasted. Need to learn how to type. Okay, so save that. And then right here in this section, so we, what we can do, now that we've written this code, it doesn't do anything yet because we're not executing it. Uh, I can run this and just actually, um, oh, I forgot to take out this thing over here on line 25. So this is a good reason to always be running your code if you're writing test-driven development, which is a good idea. Always be running your tests. So we're still running and passing, so we're not doing anything yet. So what you can do here is just sort of wedge this in. So we can say, um, salary, let's call it new salary strategy, and then pass in this dot payment, payment details. And so what's going to happen here, let's run this, and we'll see that this actually breaks. And because we haven't actually set this dot payment details, so the first thing I'm going to do up here um, is say this dot payment details equals payment details, and you'll see why we're doing this in a second. So now it's getting passed in, so it should just go back to doing what it was doing. So then what we can say is strategy. Let's say uh, variable strategy equals that. And then here, let's just swap this to say strategy dot payment amount. And let's run our code again and see what happens. So now we're executing this code up here inside of the strategy. Okay, so let's just kind of copy this. We're going to do the same thing. 
I'm gonna go ahead and like fold that up so we can see. I'm gonna create another one called hourly strategy. Okay, hourly strategy also takes in payment details, but instead it means to pull out the hourly rate and number of hours. And instead of doing what it's doing there, it needs to return this. So we're just gonna pull out this. Okay, and now we're gonna do the same exact thing. First of all, let's run it. Um, then we're gonna say this, we're gonna copy this strategy, put it right here. Um, strategy is hourly strategy. Okay, cool, so now that's working. So what you'll notice is, okay, so now we actually need to execute the payment amount with the strategy there. So what you'll notice is I'm kind of methodical about this. I'm not perfect, but this is something I'm trying to do fairly meticulously. But what you'll see is that now these things look really similar. The only difference between the two conditions here is the word hourly versus salary. So one thing we can do is pop this out like that. Okay, and then we can just delete that one. And then let's run this. Okay, so now we're still good. Then we can actually delete the variable up here and just go back to saying const here. Okay, cool. So now the only thing changing here is the class. Like that's it. So what I wanna do is yank this on out of here entirely. And the way that I'm gonna do that may be a little bit odd if you haven't seen this before, but I think you might find it cool. So what I'm gonna do is say, I'm gonna pass in an argument of strategy class. And right here, I'm gonna say const uh, strategy equals new strategy class, and then pass in this dot payment details. So now this is actually gonna break because we're not passing this thing in but down here in Jennifer, I'm gonna pass in the salary strategy. And in Bob, I'm gonna pass in the hourly strategy. So now we're just gonna delete all of this. So now if we run this again, we're getting the same exact thing. One thing that's kind of cool about this is we've actually eliminated the if. So there's no more conditional here. Now we're sort of cheating in a way because We've, we're manually passing these things in. And there's actually ways you could achieve similar things, but it's really interesting as an exercise to try to ask yourself, how could I eliminate the if conditional type stuff from wherever I'm doing? And this is one way to do it. Um, so anyway, what we've essentially accomplished here is we've made this so that, okay, a couple of things are true. So in our hourly strategy, so our salary strategy, let's say that we're happy with that, that was already built, it's perfectly fine. Our hourly strategy, let's say that this actually needs to be quite a bit more complicated. Well now it has a dedicated place for us to work on that. We can add more methods here, whatever, and expand on it without really messing with our employee class, which is really cool. The other thing is, if we needed to add other things like if we hire contractors or whatever and they want to use this same employee class oh didn't mean to close that if they make use of this same class all we have to do is create a new strategy so that's basically the the strategy design pattern in a nutshell we don't actually need these anymore um, I think that's about it for this episode um, if you have any questions throw it down in the comments let me know down there if you like this video um, but yeah, um, I think we got a handful, quite a bit more uh, design patterns to go through. I'm really enjoying this series. If you're enjoying it, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I will talk to you in the next episode.